So the next step for us today is we're going to be taking one of our insect drawings and we're going to be using them to shape up a three-dimensional insect that we can make. So we're going to take a two-dimensional drawing of an insect and make it into a three-dimensional shape of an insect. Okay, so we're going to need a half of a cup of flour, a quarter of a cup of salt, and about a quarter of a cup of water. But you might want to have some extra water laying around just in case your clay gets dry. This mixture is going to create what's called salt dough clay. So I'm going to take my half of a cup of flour. I'm just going to level this up a little bit. And I'm going to put it into my bowl. Okay. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my salt. A quarter of a cup of salt is kind of a lot. I have about a quarter of a cup of salt. So I can put that in. And I can stir it up right now if I want, or I can go ahead and add the water right away too. Remember to make sure that you're checking that you only have a quarter of a cup of water. Because if you put too much water in, you'll have to add more salt and more flour. Okay? So I'm going to mix this up and add my water just a little bit at a time. And I'm going to stir it up. What we want this to feel like is we want to make sure that we can hold it in our hand and we can kind of squeeze it and it stays how we squeeze it. If it crumbles or falls apart, it's not ready yet. So you have to make some problem solving decisions. Do you think it's dry and it needs a little bit more water? Or do you think that it's wet and it needs a little bit more flour and a touch more salt? So you're gonna to have to feel your dough and see what you think will be best. So here's my salt dough that I've been working on mixing. Now that it's kind of clumped together like this, what I can do is I can get rid of my spoon and I can just start using my hands. I'm gonna get off as much as I can off my spoon. And then I'm gonna to start to feel it with my hands. And my hands are gonna be the ones that I have to listen to because my hands are gonna be the ones that tell me if it needs more water or if it needs a little more flour or a little bit more salt. Now I got very, very lucky this time and my salt, day, salt clay looks excellent just as it is. So I don't think I need to change a thing. If yours is really sticky onto your hands and you'd see big white chunks of it left over on your hands, like that, okay, that means that you might need to add a touch more water, okay? But mine is pretty good. It's gonna feel a little sticky yet. Adults would call this tacky. A little bit sticky yet, but I think it's pretty good. My next step is that I'm gonna separate this into two parts. One of the parts should probably be a little bit larger than the other. This is going to be for the base, okay? And the other part is going to be for the details, like for the wings or the legs or the antennas, okay? If you're planning on making really large wings for yours, you might want to use the larger bowl for your extras. But I'm going to take the larger ball for my head, abdomen, and thorax. So next what you need to do is you need to bring back your wonderful drawing of your insect. One of your balls of salt dough clay is going to be used to form your head, abdomen and thorax. So this ball might need to be the larger of the two. The other ball is going to be for your legs, antennas, eyes if you want them, and if you want to do your wings that way you can too. I was looking at my insect and I think the way that I drew my insect it might look better if I did something different for the wings if I could somehow make them see through. So I'm going to explore that a little bit later. So I think it'll be best for me to have one much smaller ball for the legs and antennas and leave a really big one for my head, abdomen, and thorax. So I'm just gonna roll this into a quick ball, making sure that it still feels really good. I don't want it to be too sticky and I don't want it to crumble apart, okay? Then I can take my small ball and if I think this might take me a while, I could put this in the fridge, but I think I'll be okay and I'll just leave that there. The next thing I need to think about is what color I'd like to make my insect. There's a couple different ways you can do this. 
you can take food coloring and you can color your salt dough clay. Or if you wanna make a white insect now, you could paint it later. If you're gonna do the food coloring, your hands are probably gonna get stained. So you might wanna either think about wearing gloves or just be okay with having some green hands for a little while. Okay, so I'm gonna take my food coloring. You might wanna have an adult help you with this part. And I'm gonna put just maybe one or two drops of food coloring right on my salt clay. And then I'm gonna mush it. And mush it and mush it and mush it. I can roll it in my hands. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get that food coloring to spread out and cover my whole piece of salt dough clay. I can see some green coming through. Now when I'm playing with this, I have to be careful because if I get food coloring on other things, it might stain. So I'm gonna work really carefully. I have a big piece of salt dough clay here, so I think I'm gonna need a little bit more. But remember friends, you can always add more later, but you can't take it away. You don't wanna add so much color that it turns too dark. You can always add more, but you can't take it away. So I'm gonna keep working on this until the whole thing is covered in green and doesn't have these streaks anymore. Okay, so I got mine all covered and I decided to actually stop mixing because I kind of like the streaks in mine. I'm gonna take my other ball of clay and I'm just gonna separate that into two pieces because I'm thinking that I want my eyes to be a different color than my legs and maybe my antennas can even be a different color too. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this pink. Remember, just one or two drops, you can always add more. And I'm gonna do the same thing. Ooh, this is looking purple actually. Okay, rolling it into a ball, rolling it into a coil, squishing it back into a ball. And if you like how it looks kind of streaky like that, you can definitely leave it. But I'm gonna try to get mine nice and purpley. What a nice surprise, I thought it was pink. Okay, so I'm gonna do this for one, and then I'm gonna take the other ball and I'm gonna do that maybe in a yellow color. Okay, now that I have my salt dough clay all colored, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my picture of my insect and I'm gonna start with my bigger chunk of clay. Ugh, it's starting to get goopy. <laughs> I'm gonna take my bigger chunk of clay and I'm going to just press parts of it onto my paper to form the shapes that I have on my paper. I can make it a little larger so that I don't see the pencil lines. If you wanna be able to attach this to like hang it up on the wall or something. So I can just shape that into the shape of my head. And I'm gently pressing down so that it kind of sticks to the paper a little bit. There, now I have my head shape. And I really like how I left some of those fun swirls in there. Now I'm gonna take another blob here and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm starting by rolling it between my hands into a ball. If you don't like this, you can also roll it on the table, but I would recommend using some parchment paper or something that's not gonna to be too sticky. Okay, so this ball needs to be a little bit larger than the other. So I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna press so it kind of attaches to the paper. Now what I'm doing is I'm changing my insect from being a two-dimensional drawing to being a three-dimensional form. I'm kind of creating a sculpture. And I'm just kind of gently tapping on him to shape him how I want. I'm gonna take my last bit, which looks like it's gonna to be too big, so I might have some left over just to play with. I'm gonna take my last bit, again, rolling it into a ball with my hands or on the table if that's what you like. And I'm gonna put it right near the center and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna push it outwards. And I'm gonna just kind of follow my pencil lines that I drew on my paper. And don't worry if you're concerned about wrecking your drawing, because if you remember, earlier we made a second copy using either a light table or tracing it on the window. Here is my insect. He is looking good. I think he's gonna be really good at camouflaging too with this nice green yellowish color. 
Then I can kind of use my fingertips to form that little point on the end that I wanted. And again, I'm just kind of tapping him to combine his parts and shape them how I want. Now I have my body complete and I can go ahead and I can move on to adding my legs, my six legs, because he's an insect, and my antennas. I think I'm gonna choose to do my legs in this yellow color. So what I'm gonna have to do is divide this into six parts. That can be tricky. Let me show you a way to do it easier. First, I'll separate it in half. I'll put one half aside, and now I just need to separate this one into three parts. One, two, and three. And mine is getting a little sticky. Now what I can do is I can just roll it into a worm. Real artists would, ceramics artists would call this a coil, but I like to call them worms or snakes. Okay, so I'm rolling it out on my hand like this. And if this is too big, I can always just break it in half <laughs> and use it for two legs instead of just one. Oh my goodness. So what I'm gonna do is just lay this on my paper. Oh, I'm having a hard time here. If you have a hard time like I am, that's okay, just start again. That's the best part about clay. You don't have to erase anything. You can just start over. I think I was trying to make my legs a little bit too thin. So I might have to keep them a little bit thicker than I have on my drawing, which is okay. That just means my insect will be very strong with thick muscular legs. Okay, so I'm gonna take mine and I'm gonna set it right here. And I notice that it's sticking to my hand a little bit. So what I might wanna do is I might wanna get my hands wet. I think I'll try that really quick and see if it works better. Okay, I got a little water on my hands and now I'm gonna try to see if that works better. Oh, much better. It's not really sticking to my hand anymore when my hand is wet. So now I can just lay it back onto my paper and shape it how I want. Yay, he has a leg. Again, I'm gently tapping. I'm not pushing real hard on my insect because I need to be gentle so he doesn't break. I'm gonna work on the other legs and then we can start on the eyes and antennas. the eyes and the antennas, I'm going to switch color, but I'm basically going to do the same thing. Take a little piece or divide it if you want, whatever works best. I'm going to take two that are about the same size for each antenna. Then I'm going to make two little balls to add on for the eyes. Next, I got an idea for the wings that I think I like better, but if you want to make your wings out of clay, go ahead and do that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this scratch piece of paper and I'm gonna use this piece of parchment paper that I had been using to set my clay on. So you can either take your other drawing that you traced in the window and use that, or if you wanna do what I'm doing, you can just take a sheet of paper and you can go about the size of the wings and make your wing shape. Okay, then I can kind of hold it up to my insect and see if I think that's good. I like that. So I'm gonna let this guy dry a little bit off to the side. I'm gonna take my parchment paper and I'm going to set my paper on top. Parchment paper is really thin. They call this translucent. It lets light through very easily. I can even see my hand through when I put my hand under. So I'm gonna lay my parchment right on top of my shape for my wings and I'm just going to trace that. You can also use wax paper for this or a very thin sheet of paper that you'd use in a printer. If you use printer paper you might want to think about um, drawing some um, holding up up to a window so that it's easier to see through. Okay so now I have two wings and I know that they're the same because I traced them on the same sheet of paper. For the veining, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw a line down the middle. And now it kind of looks like a football or like some lips, hello. Then what I'm gonna do 
is I'm gonna draw some lines coming off of that middle line, curving down to the end. Curve, curve, curve. This is really just like how you might draw a leaf. Curve, curve, curve. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other one. Curve, 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 okay? Now all I have to do is cut out my wings. Remember, when we're using our scissors, our thumb goes up, yeah. Thumb goes up. Some people like to stick their pointer finger out the bottom. That's okay to do. Otherwise, you put your fingers in the bottom hole. Okay, if you wanna use your pointer, that helps you drive. This hand is for, for driving the scissors, opening and closing. Pinch, pinch, pinch. This one is gonna do the turning. Okay, so we use our helper hand to turn our paper. My thumb is up toward the ceiling and I'm using long, big opening of the scissors to cut a long, smooth shape. I always imagine a big alligator chomp. The only time we use little, little chomps, little baby snips, is when we're doing something really small and we're trying to get some details. But here on these wings, we want to do big, open your scissors big, alligator chomp. Now that I have my insect done and I have my wings done, now all I need to do is figure out where I want to place these. Now, I have pencil lines on mine, so I'm actually gonna flip mine upside down so the pencil lines look like a lighter gray. You can decide which side you like better. Either side should work just fine. Now that my clay is still a little bit wet, I can take one pokey end and I'm gonna tuck my wings right underneath his head so they're coming out about there. Now you might look at this and say, oh, but then I can't see my insect's body. So maybe you decide, you know what? I don't wanna have wings anymore. That's okay too. I kinda like how my wings look, and I know that these wings aren't really attached very tight, so I'll be able to move them if I want to. So I'm okay with having them. I'm gonna tuck my last one right underneath his head. And there I have my little insect and after a couple days, he'll dry hard and I'll be able to uh, let him fly.